Folks, think you got the whole story on the bulldog? Hmm. Better stick around and see what you may have missed. So how accurate is the bulldog? Really? Before we answer that question, we've got to define accurate. What is accurate? It's the ability to produce results that are correct. And in the case of a hunting air gun, it's to hit the kill zone. So what's the bulldog designed to shoot at? Paper? Small rodents? Uh, no. On my continent, deer, elk, hog, bear, and so on. The Benjamin Bulldog 357 is an extremely powerful air gun, and the game you'll be taking down with it will have a kill zone between 4 and 8 inches in diameter. If you're after birds and small rodents, there are going to be better choices available to you. Nonetheless, the Bulldog is an extremely accurate big bore. Over the next few minutes, you're going to see me test four different brands of pellet out to 50 yards, a few of which could dart a sparrow at that range. At 10 cents a piece, the Air Venturi round ball was the most economical load I tested, and while it was the least accurate of the four, it was certainly accurate enough. shooting from a fairly sheltered area, but as you can hear, the downrange camera is really picking up the wind now. While it was occasionally gusting from 10 to 15, I had no indicators that it was affecting these big heavy pellets. The H&N Grizzly is arguably one of the more handsome contenders, and as we'll see later on, is the top performer in expansion. At 82 grains, they'll carry enough velocity to mushroom out nicely upon hitting the target. Costing just 12 cents a piece, the Grizzly offers a fine balance between accuracy, velocity, and transferring all of its energy to the downrange target. The John Nosler brand of ammunition has been around since the 1940s and is well known amongst the powder burning community to be an elite load. It is said that the Bulldog is engineered around them, so my expectations are set pretty high.
Weighing in at 145 grains, the Nosler Ballistic Tip Extreme is marketed as an air rifle bullet, not a pellet. While the extra weight slows the bullet, they're leaving the muzzle in excess of 180 foot-pounds. A firm reminder that this gun is to be respected, and the highest level of attention paid to common sense safety. At 50 yards, this combination had no problem punching through over a foot of rubberized mulch, and as we'll see later, over 20 inches of calibrated gelatin. Yes, the Nosler brand of bullets is expensive, but they're accurate, and of the four brands of pellet I tested, left the muzzle with the most energy. To generate the kind of power it does, the Benjamin Bulldog 357 is going to use a lot of air. While I'm grateful that Crossman didn't put the fill probe on the business end of the gun, I felt like it stuck out further than it needed to, and at times, was a hindrance when bag resting the rifle. The Bulldog's got a lot going for it, and Crossman's done so many things right, but some might find the dust cover a bit cumbersome, and may question its long-term durability. The good news is that the Foster fittings allow for a secure fit and a confident fill, and the 340 cubic centimeter tank is just large enough to provide good power across the magazine. Maximum fill pressure is 3000 PSI. If you're shooting in close, say around 25 yards, the Bulldog is about a 20 shot gun. If you're shooting out to 50 or even 100 yards, you won't experience drop until after 7 shots, Nosler's included. With an 81 grain pellet like the JSB, by shot 20 velocities will drop off to about 700 feet per second. Even then, you're still producing almost 90 foot-pounds of energy, or more than twice that of the typical pre-charged pneumatic air gun in the smaller calibers. At full burn, the JSB is going to give you 160 foot-pounds of energy. What it all means to you is that the Bulldog is a 20-shot 25-yard gun, a 7-shot 50 and 100-yard gun that'll give you an average of 122.48 foot-pounds of energy across the fill. If you're going to own a Bulldog, you owe it to yourself to keep the h and Grizzlies on hand. They consistently grouped inside of 3 inches at 50 yards, offered devastating energy transfer, and averaged 148.18 foot-pounds of energy across the magazine. As you'll soon see, the Nosler and the JSB are the rounds you'll want to have in your arsenal for top performance at 100 yards. The JSB getting the nod in accuracy and the Nosler in energy transfer. Alright, let's get those 50 yard groups buttoned up. Last but certainly not least, our JSB 81 grain can be had for 18 cents a load. It'll be our most accurate of the four, and when we get to the ballistics gelatin testing, I'll let you be the judge of how well it transfers energy. By the way, this new magazine from Crossman, it's superb. Not only is the quality there, but it's super easy to use, and the ball detent and guide snick it into place nicely.
If you own a bulldog and your groups aren't what you expected, it could be because you haven't mastered the hold yet. I got my best results with a consistent but light shoulder, cheek, and grip. Too firm or inconsistent in any one of the three would widen the group. From a standing position, the same rules apply. Just cradle the gun lightly and let it recoil naturally. Some say the bulldog looks strange, and initially, my impressions were the same. But once I got it into my hands, everything changed. Its bullpup design makes it easy to cock from just about anywhere, and it's extremely well balanced in the hands. If you rest your hand on the angled forend here, things will balance out just the way you'd want them to. At 10.6 pounds, aired up, ammoed up, and scoped up, the Bulldog is a comfortable carry in the field, and its long flat sides are comfortable on the back. At just over 35 inches long, the Bulldog's big, bigger than a Bobcat 30 or Cricket 25, but it's also more powerful, and the extra heft doesn't get in the way of good handling. You've probably noticed me wearing earplugs through the making of this video. Despite a shrouded barrel and sound dampening technology, with all this power does come noise. Each time the hammer smacks the valve, my right ear registers it as pain. But when standing 10 feet away from the rifle when someone else is firing it, the sound registers more as a rifle crack than the ringing of the hammer smacking the valve. Either way, I'm recommending hearing protection. The Bulldog's trigger is dual stage Breaks at about 3 pounds and is actually quite good. The first stage is light and smooth and there's hardly any roll as the second gives way. The safety is a little clunkier than the Marauder, but it flicks around with ease and has a positive engagement. With exception of the Phil Probe's protuberance and ho-hum dust cover, I'm liking everything I'm seeing on the Bulldog, and its 100-yard performance is just icing on the cake. As I mentioned earlier, the Nozzlers are expensive, 88 cents each, but they fly so well, and really that's what's most important. On the subject of flying pellets straight, I'm noticing a trend in the comments. Those that have never shot a big bore seem unanimously disappointed in the groups. If you're among them, please know this. It's actually pretty hard. By comparison, anything 0.25 and less is gravy. I'm not sure of the exact mechanics behind it, but it seems to have something to do with the greater recoil and slower firing cycle of an air gun. The more economical JSBs are another great choice for 100 yard duty.
You've got some good ammunition to sort through when it comes to the Bulldog, and these 50-yard calibrated ballistic gelatin tests will help you do just that. Guys and gals, if you think the Bulldog is for you, I've left you a special link and coupon code in the description. And as always, if you liked what you saw here today and you want to encourage us to make more videos like it, please be sure to subscribe, tell your friends about us, and give us a thumbs up in the comments section. I'm Steve Shally. Thanks for visiting, and we'll see you real soon.